Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing coming to you with my Sunday's Art of Truth for December the 12th. And um, I'm going to be using the Winter Wonderland kit again just because it is really, it really spoke to me of a variety of things about the winters in our life, about the hope of what comes after winter what comes after hard times, those kinds of things. So I'm gonna be creating a journal spread in my Arteza journal. I believe this measures eight by eight. I will try to remember to link it. If I forget, please don't hesitate to leave that in the comments and I can go back and do that. I try to keep good notes so that I don't forget. So we're gonna create a journal spread here. I'm gonna be using, um, what I did here is I just took the kit and I cut out circles. And these, this image in particular really speaks to me, these two. So I went ahead and off camera, I stitched around all of my circles and they're gonna be just put in various places around the spread. So I will be inking this with my Vintage Photo Archival ink here in just a moment. I also, this is paper that I used in one of the ephemera videos and it's this really cool paper and I thought I would try to use this. I'm not sure how well it's going to work but um, but we're going to give it a try and um, kind of make it look like snow here on the bottom of the pages. But my mixed media tends to go kind of can go kind of sideways really fast. So you may have we may have lots of music through the video because if it gets too long, I need to have the ability to speed it up by cutting things out and things like that. So when I'm doing things that you don't need to hear, I'll probably speed the video up. I've got my palette knife. I went ahead and attached. I don't know if you've seen it before, but when I'm working with this, it comes out and it's like so frustrating. Got a handful of brushes because I tend to use a lot of brushes when I'm working with mixed media. I forgot to grab my water. It's the second here. It's just right here. So I have my, my distress sprayer that I use for my water. And we're going to be using the same colors. I don't know if you guys saw the mixed media um, pockets and belly band video, but I used a uh, Payne's gray paint. And then um, there'll be other things I'm going to need to grab as I remember um, to do that. But I'm also going to incorporate this quinacridone Nicolazo gold because it's really going to bring out the golden color in this image. Whoops. In this image here. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get started. We're gonna start with collage. So, and I will, I'll leave the, leave the collaging in, but I will speed it up. Got a couple of stencils. This one from Tim Holtz. Not sure if I'm gonna use this or not. We'll see. Um, I love it. Um, and I think it'll be, it'll add, add a lot of interest. And then the snowflake stencil again that I used in the other video. So let's go ahead and, oh, and the stencil from Sean Petit. I thought this would be really cool kind of a design, um, again, to add a little bit more texture to the background, but again, we'll see. That's always subject to change <laughs> in my world. So I'm gonna go ahead and start tearing my paper. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the papers that I chose to tear here. So we're going to go ahead and start by adhering them. I forgot to grab some parchment paper here to protect my pages. So give me just a quick second here. These are just uh, parchment papers from the grocery store in the, um, you know, where the tin foil and stuff is. And then I think one other thing I'm going to do, or I'm thinking about doing, is grabbing some masking tape. Let's see if I've got some handy here and just protect that spine. I do. So, because what happens when you do ugh, mixed media is you get a lot of um, liquid in the spine. It breaks down the integrity of the, of the, um, the binding. So I'm going to put some masking tape on there. It will, we'll be able to disguise it with some gesso. So no worries about that. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and put our papers on. Actually, we'll probably put papers there too. In fact, let's start with that. So again, I'm going to speed up this process so that you don't you don't need to watch it in real time to get the gist of it. So basically just collaging as you've seen me do before. So Thank you. 
I love how the papers even speak to me when I'm creating because they, when I select them, they, I select them because they, there's something appealing about them. Like I love this one that has tape on it. Um, it's a digital, so the, obviously the tape is not real, but I just love that idea of, you know, how sometimes do you ever have that feeling when you've been, you feel like you've been taped and glued together? Like you're just not having a very good time and you feel kind of um, in pieces and yet yeah, you've got to go on with your life. It kind of reminds me of that. Just kind of a tape and glue kind of uh, feeling. Now we're going to get some of this blue in here for some interest. I may need more of this. I don't, don't really have much here. Dry this and I will be back with you for the next step. Okay, this is mostly dry. I do want to give you a close-up because as I was drying it, I, I just fell in love with some of these, these ideas, or these, not ideas, these images here. So I just love this like torn edge here and this dark edge here with the lace, and then I've got a little bit of that bluish, those blue colors that are that are being brought into the design, and then down here we've got that lace again. Just so beautiful. And not everything, as you know, if you've watched my channel at all, not everything is going to show through um, when we're done, because it's just the layering process. So, um, so we're, I did, while I was off camera, I did do a couple things. So those two pieces of white paper, that I'm going to put along the bottom, hopefully, maybe. I did um, apply a coat of gesso on the top because the paper is not very strong, and I want to make sure that it doesn't shred when I when I try to add anything uh, to it. Um, it doesn't matter if it breaks down a little bit, but I don't want it to complete. I don't want to lose the integrity completely of the of the paper. So what I did is I got dug into my archival ink stash and I found this cobalt blue. I'm going to do a little bit of stenciling with it. Um, so this is dry enough to do this. So I'm going to grab that Sean Petit stencil and I'm going to use this design here and I'm just going to put it here and there. feel pretty good about that and I think the other thing that I want to do is get a little bit of text down and this is kind of an afterthought so I do need to reach behind me and grab a stamp just a second is good. I'll just cap that. Actually, I'm going to use this really quick while I've got it out because I do want to ink around all of my circles, as I mentioned, because this is, as I've talked about in other videos, that I use Vintage Photo Archival ink because it won't reactivate with water or, or liquid. So that's why I'm using it here. So I'm just going to ink around all these. Okay, so those are inked up. Now we're we're good to move along. So um, what I do need to do is push some of this background back because when I start putting this circles on, which I'm not going to do yet, I want them to really pop out. So I'm going to make sure I get gesso behind them. So let me just, I took a picture of my design before I started. So I'm just going to take a look at that and see what I had in mind. So yeah, I was going to put this here and then this one up here. And this folded one is going to go here. And then this little lantern is going to go over here. And then the winter is kind of in the middle here. And then we've got a small one that's going to go down here. And then this edge one is going to go over here. So that's kind of the idea here, just to give you a sneak peek. Um, so actually I'm going to take a picture of that if you don't mind really quick. I'm going to cut it. Hopefully I might get in screen a little bit guys because my camera's in the way. So, oh, looks like 
just a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. All right. So we're just going to pull those back off because we're not ready for that yet. So we need to push back some of this, some of this color to make it possible to really have those circles um, be uh, pronounced. So I'm going to get some, I'm going to get my brush and some gesso and I'm just going to start applying it here and there. Okay, there we go. So I think we're going to, I'm not even going to dry. I'm not concerned about that just so I didn't put a very thick um, coat on it. So I should be okay to just continue moving on. So we're going to go ahead and get some texture on here. So I have my, um, do I want to use the grit paste or something else? I forgot about all those other things that I had that I used in the last video but I'm not sure that I want to do that. So what did I do with them? That would be the big question of the day. Okay, I did locate them right in front of my face on my shelf, um, but I don't think I'm gonna use them necessarily. So I'm just gonna keep going and I'll just, if I feel like they, I need to add them, then I will. I don't like all this glue on my fingers. Um, so there we go. I do have, just as a side note, um, some time ago I had purchased this art guard. It protects your hands and your skin from using a lot of different paints and touching them, especially when I like to do it with my, my hands. I highly recommend it. It's not sticky or anything and it, it makes things come off of my nails easier and that kind of thing. So, but I did pull out my crackle paint, so we're going to use that. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and use our light and fluffy modeling paste. I'm gonna cap some of this stuff up before I spill it. I think we're probably done with, well, we might not be done with gesso, but I'm going to get it out of my way. And I've got my palette knife and my modeling paste. And I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of this stencil, even though we, we stamped with it right before, but now we're going to use it to add some three-dimensional texture. So... I don't want it everywhere. I'm happy with that. I do need to go drop this in the sink because I don't have my bucket in here, so I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. Thank you for allowing me to do that. I'm going to just wipe my palette knife off here real quick. Whoops, it just came out again. Dog on it. I'm going to have to use some E6000. Maybe I have some right here. I can do that really quick while well, it's on my mind because otherwise this is going to keep happening. E6000 will glue anything, anything. As I mentioned before, Sean Petit, a mixed media artist that I follow, and I was on her creative team for a, a bit. Um, she made a comment in one of her videos that it's strong enough that it will to glue a small child to the wall. <laughs> and uh, so it should hold my palette knife together, I'm thinking. I'm just gonna stick that in there, and hopefully that will have time to set before I need to use it again. So it's really frustrating when it comes out while I'm using it. So cap that back up and then we'll move on. So even though this is still wet, the, the uh, modeling paste, I think we're good to go ahead and add some of the crackle because it, um, I like to kind of blend in those, those textures. So we're going to do that. It works for me. So that looks to be enough, like enough, um, crackle paint. And I think while that's still wet, we're going to go in with another layer of texture, which is this, I think, is the same as this. So it's called two different things, Distress Grip Paste Translucent. But this is Distress Paint Grip Paste Snowfall. It is basically the same, the same product, 
It's just this is manufactured for Christmas kind of projects. So this is, um, it says apply with a palette knife or paintbrush directly to porous or non-porous surfaces for unique effects. So to, okay, there we go. Okay, so you can colorize it. Oh, I didn't know that. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this as well. So we're going to go ahead and pause and dry all of this so that we can come back and gaze at the cracks and the texture and then we will move on to the next step. I'll be right back. Okay guys, this is mostly dry. I'm just going to give you a close up of the texture that we've got going on here. So we've got these beautiful cracks. That's why I love Deco Art Crackle paint, paint because it, it never, never disappoints. So I don't know if you've noticed it, but we've got a little bit of a pink tinge here, and that's just the bleed out from the paper. So the ink, um, again, no matter how long ago I printed these um, digitals, it just, it always bleeds through, but it's not gonna be a problem. Look at that crackle, oh my gosh. It's even crackling over some of that other texture that we used with that, with that stencil from Sean Petit. Absolutely gorgeous. So <clears throat> before we move on, I, I do want to come in because my main stenciling texture is going to be the snowflake. And I don't think I'm going to use this um, on second thought, so I'm going to put that aside. But I do want to use my snowflake stencil here. So I'm going to get the um, modeling paste out here again and get my square palette knife. here and I think that would be good again I still don't know if I'm going to put that paper on we'll see as we move along <clears throat> so I'm just gonna I don't want to leave the room again so I'm going to go ahead and just I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to wipe my stencil off and I will be right back okay this is dry enough to move on I'm just going to show you a close-up of the snowflakes so there we've got some up there they're kind of hard to see but I love I love all the texture with those snowflakes. I think it's gorgeous. For some people, it's too much texture, but you can definitely tone it down if it's too much for you, but I adore it. So now comes the messy part, which is the paint. So I'm going to get my um, Payne's Gray. Well, actually, I wanna start with the uh, Quinacridone Nicolazo Gold. And it's one of my favorite colors from Golden Fluid Acrylics. So I'm going to put some out here on my mat. I'm sorry you guys can't see that, um, but it's it's right here to the to the right. <laughs> um, I can't get everything in screen, so I'm just going to apply some of that and then spritz it with some water. Again, just using my little bottle. I'm already messy with quinacridone quinacridone Nicolazo Gold <laughs> on my fingers, so. We're gonna go ahead and use um, a brush here. Okay, so I feel pretty good about that. I feel like I want a little bit more, clean that up prematurely. I want a little bit right here. 
I wiped too much of it off, so I'm just gonna do that. I like to use my paper towel or my baby wipe to kind of just pounce and bring some of that color in different places. So this is an awesome thing to use in a journal, so I'm gonna set this aside. I always forget to do that, but look at that. Oh, psychedelic, only with one color though, but still looks psychedelic. <laughs> I'm gonna set that aside. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and pause and dry this and I'll be right back. Okay, this is um, dry enough for me. So I feel pretty good about that color. I do wanna kind of get my um, circles out here just to kind of gauge how I'm feeling about this so far. So again, we were gonna put this here and we had this one over here on this edge. We had this one as the focal. That's beautiful because it's got the dark um, uh, vintage photo on the back. This is gonna be beautiful. I'm happy with that. So we're gonna come in, now it's gonna get darker because we're gonna come in with the Payne's Gray. So um, it's pretty dry. You have to be careful with this texture that um, you don't go in too soon. Actually, that's still pretty wet. So I'm gonna dry that again because I don't want to pull up all that texture. It's pretty wet and soggy right there. So just a second. That seems to be a little bit better. So now we're gonna come in with our Payne's Gray. So in the supply list, you will be able to find, um, I put, I have a mixed media basic supply list as well as my um, junk journaling or journal making supply list. So you can check that out if you're interested in any of these pro products that I'm using. Actually, I just wiped that up again prematurely. So I'm gonna get a little bit more out because I want a little bit more, whoops, a little bit more up here, this edge. There we go. Yep, just like that. Okay, actually, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and dry this and then we can decide if we wanna put more, put splatters or anything with this. So I will be right back after I dry this. Okay, I'm just gonna grab a paper towel. And I'm just gonna set it on there and just kind of push just to get excess uh, fluid off the top. And um, and then I'm going to come in and make sure this is dry. I think it's good enough. Uh, it's not completely dry, but I do want to come in with a raw umber glaze, as you've probably seen me do before. So I've got my fluid acrylic in raw umber. <clears throat> and my um, golden glazing medium. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I hate to waste this, but I need to, I need to get out of my way here. So I'm gonna wipe that up. And again, this will make a great, um, I will save this baby wipe, like so, isn't that beautiful? Set that over with the orange one, the yellow, yellowish one. And we're gonna go ahead and, let me show you a close up here real quick and then I'm gonna dry. So 
It looks super messy, right? And this is the part that's super soft. But and our, our some of our snowflakes are orange, but they won't be when we're done. So I just love the grunge. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause and dry this and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is pretty well dry. The next step will be to add some uh, some splatters. So I'm gonna get some paint or something ready here. I was thinking about using my acrylic ink, but it doesn't give such a solid splatter. So I'm just gonna grab my um, titanium white fluid acrylic from Golden. And um, this, I know this looks really messy and dark and stuff, but we're gonna we're gonna add some light to it. I was still debating over my paper. I actually think I would like to do that because this is looking so dark and I think it's gonna really tie it all together to have the, the paint splatters and then the white snow bank here. So I'm gonna grab a splatter brush here. So this is gonna help lighten it up. And so as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is my Sunday's Art of Truth. So if you wanna read the inspiration around this piece, this one is called The Hope. Last week was The Gift. So you can hop on over to the blog and the link to the blog will be in the description box below. So we're gonna to have to dry one more time. I know that's tedious, but <laughs> necessary. So. I will be right back, guys. Okay, so this is dry too. Doesn't it look so much better? It's still really grungy and messy, but I adore it. So the next thing we're gonna do is come in with the silver paint, similar to what I did in the other video, the uh, mixed media pockets and uh, belly band. This is Iridescent Silver Fine from Golden Fluid Acrylic. And I'm hoping that I can see this. It's kind of dark, so I'm going to kind of go slow. I'll probably speed through this, but you guys will get the gist. Okay, I feel like that is enough. So I'm, I should be okay to go ahead and, um, oh, I missed the top. Doggone it, hold on. I missed this top edge. I love silver and gold um, a lot, so it's working for me. So we're gonna go ahead and put these papers on. And again, I did give them a coat of gesso so that they would be nice and stable. I am going to use my Fabri-Tac. And the beautiful thing about this, guys, is this this is just something in a journal. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's my creation. It's, and it's an expression of my heart and my art. So journaling, uh, 
art journaling is a great way to do that and feel like you, um, you're expressing yourself in, and it's inside of a book. So it's your own personal, your own personal thing. I just like to share what I create. So just to inspire other people. So again, just as I'm doing this, I'm going to talk with you a little bit more about the inspiration. So as you know, the gift was the first in the series. This is the hope. And um, as I mentioned, I think in the beginning of the video, I can't remember. It feels like a long time ago. Um, I um, I love the the this this truth and this concept about how, about how um, you know we come. You know, our world is so dark and so um, sometimes so negative and so depressing that. I love the, the truth that I, I can hold on to that, you know, Jesus is my rock. He is my light. He is my hope. And he came to us, you know, on Christmas day, you know, as best we understand, um, that that's what we're, what we, what we celebrate. If, if you're a believer and you believe in, in, um, God and Jesus and those things, um, that's what we celebrate. So he is the light. He is the hope. He, he is everything that I ever needed in my life. So, um, so enough preaching. So we're going to go ahead and adhere our, um, you know what I need, think I probably, I think we're okay because even if some of that gets covered up, it's okay. It's not going to, nothing's going to happen if, um, if this, um, silver paint is not dry. So this one, we're not going to get these strings, um, painted apparently because they weren't adhered when we were doing all that, that, um, painting. So this little, um, bit is, where it wasn't completely dry. So I am um, going to probably cover that up. I'm just pulling up my photo. Oh my goodness, my phone won't open. <laughs> ah, hold on. Okay, so we had this one here. I'm just going to kind of put these in the order that I had them. So I had this one here and then I had, uh, where's Winter? Winter, Winter, where did you go? Oh, don't say you lost winter. Oh, it's on the floor. <laughs> Hold on. Winter. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is part of the message too, is that, you know, uh, the seasons of our life, you know, winter, we have winter seasons and not just, not just talking about weather, right? I'm talking about hard times, challenges, and things like that, that, um, that stretch us and, and they make us really long for the next season, you know, the, the newness, the freshness of, of the next season. So, and I think we all share that in common because we're all so, so perfectly human. And, um, and I say perfectly human because I believe that's true. Um, we can be beautiful and we can be inspiring and we can be all those things, even in, in brokenness and in, in all of that, that kind of stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and put this one here, I think is how I had it. So we're gonna start gluing and I am get, again, just gonna use my Fabri-Tac. I even love the strings because I feel like I feel like that says something too about kind of the things that that kind of trail off of us. They're attached to us, and they um, they can be things that we you know kind of see as negatives, but they can also be positive things. It's kind of like the ripple in the water kind of idea where all the choices that we make have a ripple effect, right? on the world around us, 
and um, and that's kind of what the strings remind me of. Not doing anything with the snow. I love it just the way it is. It's a little bit rough down here on this bottom corner, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I just moved, I shifted that down because I wanted to see that yellow there. I think we have a really good balance of color, lights and darks here. These could be lighter, I think that, yeah, but it is what it is and it's still beautiful. So I am not complaining. So the last thing that I'll do um, off camera is I will be doing some, I'll be using my soft pastel around the edges of the spread just to um, kind of um, create a frame around them. So we are done guys. I hope that you'll, um, you'll like the video because if you, uh, that's what allows my videos to be seen by more people. And, um, oh, I realized, oh my goodness, broken thought. So I realized I didn't put my sentiment on here. I didn't put hope. Um, so I might do that off camera. I'm going to think about that. I may not put anything. I may put a little one on here. Uh, maybe I'll um, stamp it or something. We'll see. Um, but anyway, <laughs> what was I saying? Ah, um, oh, um, liking and subscribing. So I never want anybody to feel pressured, but I also know that I'm just kind of looking at videos and I oftentimes will just forget to like a video. And when you like a video, uh, YouTube sees that and they will recommend that video to other people that are that like that, that kind of like content. So um, if you wouldn't mind liking the video, I'd really appreciate it. But again, never any pressure there at all. So um, I will see you over on the other side on the blog and you can check out the inspiration for this piece as well as the full supply list and close up photos. So thank you guys so much. Bye-bye.